Welcome back to the channel, my name's Shan. If you're a regular viewer, you'll know I recently added 5.46 kilowatt potential of solar and an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery to my existing 2.85 kilowatt potential solar array, which is installed in late 2015. From what I understood before the new install is that I could continue to be paid in the feed-in tariff or fit for my 2015 solar array and use the new solar array's generation meter to claim the smart export guarantee or SEG. One thing I didn't quite appreciate at the time is that we only have one smart meter that controls the import and export, and I imagine this is the same for most houses. There is no way of my SEG provider telling which solar panel array the electricity I'm exporting has come from, and of course I can't claim both the FIT export and the SEG payment for the same exported electricity. Just a quick bit of background, you probably already know that the FIT was introduced in April 2010 and close to new applications in March 2019. Under the FIT, the scheme pays both households for both the total number of kilowatt hours of electricity generated and a payment for the units of electricity exported to the national grid, assumed to be 50% of the amount generated. The FIT is payable for up to 20 years or 25 years if you had the foresight to install and sign up before August 2012, and is inflation linked. The Smart Export Guarantee replaced the FIT in January 2020, and unlike the FIT, and as the name suggests, SEG only pays for exported electricity. In other words, the generated electricity minus the electricity you use. There are several suppliers who provide SEG tariffs and are well worth looking at, otherwise you're essentially giving away exported energy for free to the national grid. Both the FIT and SEG payments are tax free. I was initially of the impression that staying on the FIT would make the most sense to me. However, there is a way of keeping part of your FIT and claiming the SEG but there are a few factors to consider before making that decision. I've spent several hours creating a spreadsheet to help me make an informed and personalised decision to whether the FIT or the SEG is a better financial option for our household. And the findings are really interesting. This video and spreadsheet will be useful if you're on the FIT with one solar array, or like me you have more than one solar array installed at different times, and you're looking at whether the SEG is a good option for you. I'll be talking you through how to use it and a few things to consider, for example how generation, self-consumption, seasonal variance and inflation play a part in the figures, some of the risks of changing things up and finally what I plan to do after digesting the data. If you want to skip to a specific section in the video that's fine and I've added the relevant timestamps in the video description box below. Likewise you can download a copy of the spreadsheet by the buy me a coffee link in the video description box and use it for your own figures. Thank you in advance if you choose to support the channel joining this long list of people who have done just that in downloading the solar and battery payback calculator in one of my previous videos. So without further ado, let's jump on the computer and check out the numbers. Okay, so this is the basic scenario. Is it beneficial giving up the fit and moving exclusively to the seg? I'm pretty sure that the answer will be no, but let's check it out. Just to note, all of the sheets can be accessed in the bottom left of the Excel workbook. You can enter your annual generation figure in kilowatt hours here. The number on the left is my 2015 solar array's generation, and I calculated this number by looking back at my annual generation over the last seven years and taking the yearly average to increase its accuracy. My newer solar installation is estimated to produce 4,602 kilowatt hours per year. So, 2,355 kilowatt hours from the old array and 4,602 kilowatt hours from the new array gives us a total of 6,957 kilowatt hours generation per year. If you're not sure what your figures are, you can check your install documents, or if you're still struggling to locate these, you can click the help button here, which will take you to this page, and should help you work it out based on your location, roof orientation, and pitch, etc. Next, add your FIT generation and deemed export rate here, which can usually be found on your last FIT payment letter. You can see that my generation rate is 15.38 pence per kilowatt hour and deemed export rate is 5.99 pence per kilowatt hour in my most recent January payment from EDF. For comparison, add your chosen SEG provider's SEG tariff rate here. I'm currently with Optimus Energy on the GO tariff and whilst on this import tariff the only option for me would be to go on this standard SEG which at the time of making this video would earn me a flat rate of 4.1p per every kilowatt hour exported. I'm aware there are a few other options for export with Optimus Energy and I'll cover that as we go on in the video. Add your self consumption figure here. This is the percentage of the total generation you use, whether that be into the house via appliances or into a storage battery. A study done by the University of Oxford suggests a self consumption figure of 45% and if you're interested you can find that paper here. However, this figure only relates to solar generation to the home and doesn't take into consideration a storage battery. 
I would keep this figure at 45% unless you're sure you'll be consuming more. Clearly if you have battery storage your self consumption will be higher. I suspect we will self consume around 65% all year round. As expected increasing our self consumption reduces the export payment and decreasing it has the opposite effect. You can see as we've been adding the figures into the spreadsheet the cells below for our fit and seg total annual payments have been calculated. Just a note for the seg we're only being paid for the electricity exported not everything that's generated. And to reflect this the generation payment has been crossed out. And as we suspected it would make little sense for us to give up our fit and move entirely onto a seg tariff with their current offerings. But at the beginning I said that you could have both. How does that work? This was news to me too and came about after I asked about the fit and seg in this excellent solar and battery Facebook group which I suggest you consider joining and I've dropped a link to it in the video description. If we wanted to claim the seg in addition to the fit we would have to give up the fit deemed export but could continue to receive our fit generation payments. As I mentioned before this is because the seg provider wouldn't know which solar array the export of electricity was coming from and could potentially mean we get paid export twice in the form of the FIT and also the SEG. It would be nice but clearly it wouldn't be right. So moving on to the next Excel sheet, FIT plus SEG. You can see my figures have already been pulled through from the previous sheet. Of course should you wish to you can change them on this sheet. Comparing the FIT with the FIT generation plus segment payment figures together you can see that the latter yields a slightly higher total payment by £29.30. But this is overly simplistic for several reasons and I'll go through these now in the next sheet. Firstly we don't generate let alone export the same amount of electricity all year round. Naturally in the summer when we have loads of solar energy far more than we can use or store in the battery we'll be exporting more. And the opposite is true in the winter. You can see in the previous sheet how different self consumption levels would dramatically reduce or increase our export payments. For this reason I've chosen to break down the solar generation figures into quarters. January to March, April to June, July to September and October to December or Q1 to Q4. If you have your own quarterly generation figures you can input these into the appropriate cell. If you don't you can enter your solar array's kilowatt potential into this cell and it will automatically populate each quarter and daily average generation in kilowatt hours. This is based on my south southwest facing array's generation of approximately 800 kilowatt hours per kilowatt potential annually. Again the fit generation and deemed export tariff rates have been pulled through and the payment amounts calculated for you. Another big factor is the export tariff you're on. As I mentioned before being an octopus NG's go import tariff I'm currently limited to their export tariff flat rate of 4.1p per kilowatt hour. So essentially to stop us buying cheap electricity off peak, storing it in a home battery and then exporting it back to them at a higher amount during the peak rates. This GO tariff works really well for us during the quarters of Q1 and Q4 when we're generating around 12 and 6 kilowatt hours respectively. There just isn't enough solar around to charge our car, home battery and export in these quarters and therefore charging the car and home battery on a cheap off-peak tariff like GO makes a lot of sense. And if you think you're joining Octopus Energy on one of their import tariffs I've dropped my referral link with an extra £20 from us on top of the standard £50 bonus from Octopus in the video description box below and in the spreadsheet. The summer however is a different game altogether. You can see that our Q2 and Q3 solar generation would easily cover our daily consumption of around 14 kilowatt hours and then some, meaning little need to import energy from the grid. There isn't any reason why I couldn't leave Octopus Go, assuming I can charge the car with solar during the day, to another import tariff around March time and move the export to one of Octopus Energy's outgoing tariffs till October. Either Octopus Outgoing Fix which guarantees a rate of 15p for every kilowatt hour we export or Outgoing Agile which matches half hourly prices with the day ahead wholesale rates. This excellent website shows us the average kilowatt hour price over the last 365 days on Outgoing Agile for each 30 minute slot in the northeast. You can see the export average during the times when we're typically generating far more than we can use never goes below 15p per kilowatt hour. Some of these prices will be skewed for the winter months but a fairly conservative estimate of 17.5p I suspect would be achievable here. And you can see how changing this export rate figure in Q2 and Q3 improves our yearly export payment. The other factor is self consumption. In the previous sheet we estimated self consumption based on our annual generation. But as we know the generation isn't evenly distributed throughout the year. We can use this quarterly solar generation data to allow for quarterly variation and make these payment figures more accurate. 
we self-consume, and by that I mean generation to the home and battery, around about 80% in Q1 and Q4. However, in Q2 and Q3, generation outstrips our consumption, and I suspect will fall to around 45 and 50% respectively. Again, you can see how changing these consumption figures increases the accuracy of the total export payment figure. Comparing the FIT with the FIT generation plus seg payment figures now, you can see that the latter yields a significantly higher total payment of £845.48. Compared to the £428.56, a £416.92 difference, almost double our original FIT payment. But we're not finished yet, and if you're finding this video useful, then please hit the like button and subscribe for free. It really helps the channel out with the all-important YouTube algorithm, so thank you. I mentioned before that the FIT payments are inflation linked, but the SEG payments currently are not. Will this make a difference? Looking back at our FIT payments over the last 7 years, the average inflation in both the generation and deemed export payment is around 3%. This next sheet allows you to factor this in, or your chosen level of inflation, in these boxes here. You will notice on the right side of the sheet, inflation is only linked to the FIT generation element and not the SEG. Ofgem have just announced that in April this year, FIT tariffs will be adjusted by an RPI of 13.4%. This figure isn't all too surprising, given the rate of rising goods and services with inflation currently running at just over 10%. However, it's likely that this will fall. According to Cornwall Insights, energy prices are going to fall from Q2 and continue this trend through to Q4. Although it doesn't look like import rates will return to 2020 levels for some time, if ever. Our FIT tariff has 13 years left to run of its 20 year guaranteed inflation linked payments. Looking at the end of year 13 and factoring in a possible 5% yearly inflation rise, we would have been paid an estimated total of £7,591 and 1p. Now compare that to the FIT generation plus SEG payment figures on the right. Accounting for the FIT generation payments inflation rise, we would be paid a total of £12,681.76 at the end of year 13, a massive £5,237.10 difference. I'm pretty astounded by that difference between the FIT and FIT generation and SEG total payments. I really wasn't expecting it to be that much. But I hate the term no-brainer. It's always good to have some actual numbers to back up your decisions and be aware of some of the possible risks before giving up any part of the FIT. You'll certainly want to consider that once you come off the FIT deemed export payment, you can't go back onto it. Well, certainly not the deemed element of it. According to EDF, my current FIT provider, I could change from the SEG back to the FIT export, but this would have to be metered rather than deemed, where they will work out a percentage to pay me, which will just be for the original installation. Make of that what you will, but based on my previous experience of being an EDF supply customer, I'm dubious. Looking at the numbers and the worst case scenario that they deem I use all the electricity generated by the original installation, I'd lose around £1,237.28 over 13 years with inflation of around 5% factored in. Another thing to consider is that unlike the FIT, the SEG is not guaranteed. There are no set or minimum tariffs for the SEG. The only requirement is that the export tariff rate must be greater than zero at all times. Furthermore, unlike the FIT, the SEG is not currently inflation linked. As I mentioned previously, the SEG depends on your actual export after self-consumption. So if your electricity self-consumption is likely to increase in the future, this could significantly impact on your export payments. For example, you get an electric vehicle, like this Nissan Leaf with a 40 kilowatt hour battery, which will give you an estimated 145 miles real world range or 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour. Say you drive 10,000 miles per year, or just over 27 miles per day. 27 miles divided by 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour will consume 7.5 kilowatt hours more electricity per day. We already charge around 8 kilowatt hours daily for our plug-in hybrid, but you can see if we were to increase this self-consumption further, how the total payment falls. Your figures may be different, and I would urge you to consider the numbers very carefully and the risks in giving up part of the fit before making any decisions. So after working through the numbers, you're probably wondering what I'm going to do. As I said before, the worst case scenario is that I lose the fit deemed export payment entirely, which would mean I'd lose about £1,237.28 over 13 years with 5% inflation factored in. However, there's potentially a gain of just over £5,000 by giving up the fit deemed export, keeping the fit generation and gaining the seg payments. If Octopus outgoing disappears and I need to go back to a flat rate of 4.1p per kilowatt hour export, I'd still be better off than keeping the fit as it is. So yeah, 
I'm going to go for it. I think the benefits outweigh the potential risks, only time will tell whether it's worth it, and I'll certainly keep you posted on the channel about how we get on. If you found this video useful, then please like it and subscribe to the channel to keep up with new content we'll be uploading. Let me know in the comments section below your thoughts on this. Have you been thinking about switching? And if you have, how's it going? What kind of figures are you getting? Or if you stay put, what made up your mind? And if you're wondering about adding more solar and or a battery yourself and want to find out what our setup looks like, then I think you'll find this video useful and I'll catch you there. Thanks for watching. See you next time.